Welcome to Faith Baptist Online Church Service. Hi, this is Greg Berdine. I'm the senior pastor of Faith Baptist Church, and we are so glad that you have joined us today. Whether this is your first time or this is a normal experience for you, we're, we're so glad that you found us and that you're part of our day today. We hope it's a blessing to you. In the description, if you will look there, there is an online bulletin. There's a connection card. Please fill that out and let us know a little bit about you. We'd love to connect with you. There's also a place where you can indicate prayer requests. Uh, we, we love to be more than just a service that you watch. We would love to be your online church. So let us know a little bit about you. In the comment section, let us know who you are, where you're at, who you're watching it with. Again, we would just love to make a connection. We were made for people and that we need people. And so I, I hope that this is a blessing to you. God bless you. Have a great time together.
Hey, good morning, everyone. Thanks for joining us on Wine this weekend. So glad that you're that you're taking the time to uh, watch our online service wherever you might be, whatever platform you're on. I'm actually at Tecumseh High School graduation this morning. Uh, Josh finally gets his graduation ceremony. So if you have any notes, still leave your comments. I'll, I'll get to them at some point today. I, I probably won't during a graduation ceremony, but still leave your messages, leave your comments, leave your likes. We want to know who's here with us. And I want to ask that you uh, just take a few minutes, fill out your connection card, faithbaptistweb.org slash attendance. Again, let us know who's here, who's watching with you. Uh, any way that we can care for you or pray for you uh, this week would be uh, just super helpful. Put it on that connection card. You can also find your bulletin at faithbaptistweb.org slash bulletin. And that will give you some helpful information about the life of our church. You can follow along with Pastor Greg's message. Uh, I know some of you are watching on your TVs and you can pull up the bulletin on your phone and actually follow along. It's just a great way to uh, remove some distractions that you might have during the church service. So faithbaptistweb.org slash bulletin. I also want to uh, remind you that our giving portal is at faithbaptistweb.org slash give. You can uh, give online. You can uh, drop a check off at the church or mail it if you'd like. But the most effective, efficient way people handle money the less amounts of time is through our giving portal. So faithbaptistweb.org slash give. And um, there's lots of other information on our website. You can go ahead and check it out. You can visit our Facebook page. There's information there as well. So I would just love to pray for us this morning. God, thanks for today. Thank you that the joy of the Lord reigns supreme in our life. God, I ask that anyone who is watching this video this morning that just might be struggling. Um, God, I ask that you would pour your sustaining grace into their lives. Um, God, where there might be just uh, some medical things that people are still praying over, uh, God, would you provide answers for them? Would you uh, give the doctors wisdom in those situations? Would you give them a glimmer of hope? Um, God, would you place those people in the palm of your hands this morning, I can just see uh, some different families that are watching online with things that are going on in their lives. And God, I ask that your, your grace would shower them right now and they would feel the presence of God um, comfort them and provide understanding and um, help them to be able to go through uh, this next week with a renewed hope. God, we continue to pray for our country and all of the the things that are going on in our country with COVID and with protests and with um, the election and uh, all sorts of just different different circumstances that we face as a country. Um, God, we ask that you would draw us back to you and that you would use the circumstances and the fact that things continue to be shut down to regain our attention. God, would you bring revival um, into our lives, into our community, into those homes that are uh, on the other side of this video. God, I ask that you would um, have your way in our lives. Help us to submit to you more and more each day. God, I pray for this church service. Uh, I pray that you'd be blessed by it, that you'd be honored by it, and the amount of time that's been prayed over it already, that you would um, be lifted high. So God, we ask that you would um, fill our living rooms, um, that you would um, speak into our lives, that you would encourage us this morning. God, we want to worship you uh, out loud. We want to declare that we love you out loud. So we ask that you would remove any distractions there might be today uh, so we can focus a little bit of time on you. In Jesus' name, amen.
peace in the having some problems with uh, other people you know people problems can be the worst doesn't matter if it's in your family or anywhere and we're hearing a lot today about bullying and uh, where people kind of push other people around intimidate others a guy by the name of Jack Hanley talked about when he was bullied when he was in elementary school and kid would take his lunch money so he decided that he would learn karate and so he went to the karate instructor began taking lessons Pretty soon, the karate instructor began charging him $5 a lesson, and he said it was cheaper just to pay off the bully, so he just kept paying off the bully and forgot the karate lessons. Have you ever been picked on a bully when you were a kid? You know, somebody intimidated you, started a fight, made fun of you because, huh, for me, my glasses, I was skinny. You know, they look for anything, um, complexion, uh, ethnicity. You know, kids can be cruel, and you're supposed to get grow out of it but you know what sometimes there's adult bullies and they just push their weight around and we just don't get along with other people we're going to look today at um, how to respond to people who don't treat you right unlovely people people that hurt you how should we respond jesus tells us we should still love them that's hard to do it is really really hard to do but in luke chapter 6 Jesus is going to talk real, straight talk about how we treat our enemies, how we treat the unlovely people in our life. So I'm in Luke chapter 6. I'm going to begin reading in verse 27 through 36. And uh, we're going to actually look and see how that we're supposed to do good to them. Verse 27. But I say to you which hear, love your enemies. Do good to them which hate you. Bless them that curse you and pray for them which despitefully use you. And to him that smiteth thee on one cheek, offer also the other. And him that taketh away thy cloak, forbid not to take thy coat also. Give to every man that asketh of thee and of him that taketh away thy goods, ask them not again. And as ye would that men should do to you, do ye also to them likewise. For if you love them which love you, what thanks have you? For sinners also love those that love them. And if you do good to them which do good to you, what thank have you? For sinners also do even the same. And if you lend to them of whom you hope to receive, what thank have you? For sinners also lend to sinners to receive as much again. But love ye your enemies, and do good, and lend hoping for nothing again, and your reward shall be great, and ye shall be the children of the highest, for he is kind unto the unthankful and to the evil. Be ye therefore merciful, as your Father also is merciful. That's hard. How do we love unlovely people? We just do good to them. Jesus talks about here that when people treat you mean, when people say bad things about you, when people put you down, what should you do? Not, not, not do it back to them. But he uses some words. You should bless them. You should give to them. You should pray for them. You should forgive them. Be merciful to them. That is really, really a hard thing to do, but that's the Christian thing to do. And here's an interesting story. It's a Chinese story, an old ancient Chinese story about a young girl named Lili. And Lili got married and she went to spend time with her husband and mother-in-law. And as she was there, her mother-in-law just treated her like nothing, was mean to her, cruel to her, called her names. And Lili tried to take it, but pretty soon it just got to her. And she just wanted to do anything at all to get rid of her. So she went to the local herbist, Mr. Huang, and she told him her dilemma. She said, you know, um, I want to get rid of my mother-in-law. Do you have any poison that I could poison her with to get rid of her? 
Mr. Wang began to think. He said, let me go in the back room. He got together some things, took a little sack, and he said, here it is. He said, but this is, you don't want something that's, that will kill her instantly. You want something that will kill her slowly so that people won't take notice, so they won't, they won't accuse you of it. So take this, put it in her food and her drink, and over time the poison will develop in her body and she'll die. And you don't want to have anybody think you're doing it. And so all this time you need to just be kind to her and nice to her. No matter what she says to you, no matter what she does to you, you need to show her kindness and goodness and be good to her. And that way nobody will blame you for it. So she went home all excited and began to put it in her food and began to put it in her drinks. And, and as much as her mother-in-law was abusive and angry and said things, she held her tongue. She, and she didn't say anything or do anything. And pretty soon she found out she wasn't getting as angry and as angry as often. In fact, her attitude began to change. Her mother-in-law's attitude began to change. And pretty soon they started to get along a lot more. And eventually, after about six months, she loved her mother-in-law just like her own mom. And so she went back to the herbalist, Mr. Hwang. And she says, Mr. Hwang, I've got a problem. She said, I don't hate my mother-in-law anymore. I don't want her to die. Could you give me something that will bring her help? And he just laughed. He said, well, I have to be honest with you. He said, um, what I gave you was actually vitamins. And it was actually making her healthy. And you weren't poisoning her. The poison was in your heart. And you needed to do good for her to get that poison out of your heart. Isn't that an amazing story? And that is really true. That if you do good to other people, it will change your heart. And it very well may change their heart. But why should we be nice and kind and do good for people? It's because it helps us become and, and really look like God our Father. Because God is a merciful God. God is a kind God. He isn't just nice and good to good people. He is good to all people. He is good to everyone. I love John 3.16, For God so loved the world, He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Anybody who would come to God asking for forgiveness, begging for mercy, will be forgiven of all their sin and will have a right relationship with Him. I want you to listen to the story of somebody that did that. They trusted Jesus as their Savior, and He saved their soul, brought them into the family of God. Listen to their story. Hi, everybody. My name is Heidi Bannister. The testimony I'd like to share with you today uh, is about a healing that I experienced about eight years ago. So back in um, January of 2012, I was going in to have some shoulder surgery on my right shoulder. Um, about 10 days after surgery, after being home, I started to experience um, uh, quite a good amount of pain. So I went and saw my chiropractor, had an adjustment. Um, I actually went back the next day because the pain had not subsided any. Um, and then I think I went back a third time that week and he suggested to me that I call my shoulder surgeon because uh, he just didn't think it was normal that I was experiencing um, so much pain so soon after surgery. So I did the next day, called my shoulder surgeon. Um, since it was a Friday though and his office was closing, he uh, sent me to the emergency room. He told me that he wanted me to have a, a chest x-ray to rule out uh, the chance of a, a blood clot in my lung from the surgery. And um, the doctor that was there walked back into the room and told me that he had good news and bad news. Um, good news was there was no blood clot in my lung. Bad news was they found a mass in my chest and in his words, it's some kind of cancer. That kind of hits you like a brick wall. No one wants to hear that word. Um, and that's not even what I was there for. So a lot of fear creeps into your head. 
So I tell you, nothing will put you in your Bible, though, like somebody telling you that you have cancer. And so, of course, I was doing a lot of Bible reading, a lot of studying God's word. Um, I, I, I read about what God had to say about me and about how he made me and about what he could do. And I had full faith that God had control over this situation. Anyway, after that third biopsy, they were able to get a good enough sample and determine that it wasn't cancer. Um, and I thought that was very good news. And I was quickly corrected by my um, thoracic surgeon because he said, well, it's good that it's not cancer, but we really don't know what it is. And they had never seen it before, which is not what you want to hear. It's a lot easier to focus on what you can see in front of you um, rather than what God's doing and what God can do. So um, I went to see this pulmonary specialist at U of M. And every time I prayed about this issue, I just had this feeling that God had me, that I didn't need to worry that God held me. I knew it so thoroughly. I really didn't spend any time thinking about other options. And so I went back to uh, U of M to see the pulmonary specialist. I looked at him and I said, you know, God's going to take care of this. And he looked me dead in the eye and he said, I don't think you get it. This will kill you. This will grow back. We can remove some of it with surgery. We can put stents in to prolong your life, but there's no cure. There's no treatment. This is going to kill you faster than cancer, which was definitely another blow to my mind that was trying to focus on God and trying to stand on God's word and what he says. But God cares about all of his children and God does say that we are to go boldly before him and he also says that in his word that we have not because we ask not so I was asking and I was standing on God's word and I was not budging and so I went back for another appointment with this pulmonary specialist at U of M and so we're waiting for the tests and he checked his computer and he just stood there with this look of, he, he just didn't understand what he was seeing. And he, he just kind of cocked his head and he, he says, huh, this doesn't make any sense. He said, this says virtually 95% resolved. Your thoracic surgeon only got 50% of it with the surgery. I can't explain this. This this is it's 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 almost gone. And he said I just can't explain this and I said you don't need to explain that because you didn't do that. God did that. And he said, "Huh. You are right. Your God did it." And I have not had any issues since. I still do have some um things going on with the vocal cord still paralyzed still obstructing the airway but I feel awfully blessed just to be here and I think it's very important that I give the glory to God because even that unbelieving doctor had to admit that this was a miracle this is not something he sees every day I hope that that gave him something to think about I hope that this gives you something to think about I hope it reminds you that God is still in the business of doing miracles. I love hearing people's story about when they trust Jesus Christ as their personal Savior. Have you made that decision? You know, God is a merciful God. That's what the, the verse here says. It says, Be ye therefore merciful as your Father also is merciful. God does not want to condemn you. God wants to forgive you. And if you will turn to Jesus Christ, he will forgive you of your sin. You say, what do I have to do? Well, you need to pray. And what do you say? Well, A, B, C. A, admit to God that you're a sinner. B, believe in Jesus Christ, that he is God's son, died on a cross 
for your sin and rose again. And C, commit your life to Jesus. Surrender your life to Him. If you would like to receive Jesus Christ and know the mercy of God personally and have a right relationship with Him, all you have to do is pray in ABC. Admit you're a sinner, believe in Jesus, and commit your life to Him. Let me pray for you. And if you'd like to do that, I want to lead you in a prayer that you can just simply repeat after me from your heart. So let me pray for you. Heavenly Father, thank you for Jesus, who loves us so much that he died on the cross to forgive us of our sin and to provide a place in heaven. And all who trust in Jesus will come into the family of God. So I pray that you bless those who come to you. And I pray, Lord, that you will help them as they pray this prayer. So if you're ready to pray and receive Jesus Christ, simply from your heart, repeat after me. Dear God, I admit that I am a sinner and I believe in Jesus Christ. He died on the cross for me, and He rose again. And today, I commit my life to Jesus. Please save my soul. Amen. Now, if you honestly from your heart prayed that prayer, congratulations. Greatest decision you will ever make. But this is just the beginning of your life in Christ, and we would love to help you in your journey. So in the comment section, if you would just let us know that you trusted Jesus Christ or check off a little emoji, you know, connect with that and put it up. We'll, we'll send you some things. In the description, there is a connection card. Please fill that out. And there is a place where you can indicate any spiritual decision you made that you trusted Jesus Christ, received Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Any way you can or call me, uh, we'd love to give you some material absolutely free of charge. We have a New Believer's Bible which is a great, has a lot of great things to help you. And in a little booklet called Because, called because I'm Saved, your next step to begin a closer walk with Christ. We'd love to send these to you and help you in your journey for Christ. But this whole story here about when people treat you mean, what should we do? Jesus is straight talk about love. First of all, uh, we love unlovely people by doing good. But then here's kind of the hard part. We also love unlovely people by, by not judging them. All right. As the people are going to be do bad things, but we're not supposed to judge them. Let's look at verse 36. Actually, um, it goes verse 37. Judge not and you shall not be judged. Condemn not, ye shall not be condemned. Forgive, and ye shall be forgiven. Given, it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over, shall men give unto your bosom. For with the same measure that you meet with all, it shall be measured to you. Again, he spake a parable unto them. Can the blind lead the blind? Shall they not both fall into the ditch? The disciple is not above his master, but every one that is perfect shall be as his master. And why beholdest thou the mote that is in thy brother's eye, but perceiveth not the beam that is in thine own eye? Either how canst thou say to thy brother, Brother, let me pull out the mote that is in thine eye, when thou thyself beholdest not the beam that is in thine own eye? Thou hypocrite, cast out first the beam out of thine own eye, and then shalt thou see clearly to pull out the mote that is in thy brother's eye. For a good tree bringeth not forth corrupt fruit, neither doth the corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. For every tree is known by his own fruit. For of thorns men do gather figs, nor of bramble bush gather they grapes. A good man out of the good treasure of his heart bringeth forth that which is good. And an evil man out of the evil treasure of his heart brings forth that which is evil. For of the abundance of the heart his mouth speaketh. I love that passage. Um, it tells us not to judge. Don't judge. Don't condemn. Don't criticize. When somebody does wrong to you, don't do wrong back to them. Be, be kind to them. And that's hard. That's hard not to do. Because when we see faults in somebody else, especially somebody that has had faults against us, we want to point it out. But Jesus said, don't do that. Don't do that. There's a story kind of a humorous story. Uh, husband and wife moved into a new neighborhood. And as they're sitting there looking out at their neighbors, they see laundry on the line. And the wife looks out and says, my, their laundry is dirty. Does she not know how to clean her laundry? It is filthy dirty. She says, somebody needs to teach her how to do laundry. Maybe she's not even using soap. So the next day she looked out and she said, she still has dirty laundry. What's going on? 
And the third day she looked out and she said, finally, the laundry's clean. Somebody must have told her. And the husband said, nope, I just cleaned our windows. <laughs> you know, sometimes we see faults in other people and actually we need to take care of our own problem. Why aren't you supposed to judge? Because you're not the judge. We, we aren't the judge. Now, this doesn't mean that we don't recognize if somebody's doing wrong. God has already judged that it's wrong, so that's, that's not the problem. The problem is that when we judge somebody else, or we criticize somebody else, and we haven't taken care of our own things. Jesus says, you know, the same way that you treat other people is the same way you're going to be treated back. We need to look for good in other people. Jesus gives an illustration of a tree. Good trees give good fruit. Bad trees give bad fruit. When you have Christ living in you, you need to treat other people with kindness and not with criticism. So look for the good in other people, not the bad. What if everybody lived like this? What if everybody lived like the golden rule, to do unto others as we would have others do unto us? If we would look to do good and we wouldn't criticize, we wouldn't judge, we just leave it alone. Isn't, wouldn't that be a great world to live in? So what can I do? What, what can I practically do? Well, I think this, talk less, listen more. If we would listen, we might understand. So talk less, listen more. Try to put yourself in their shoes. Try to understand their actions from their perspective. What they, what they do is may be very wrong, but maybe if you understood them a little bit better, it would help. And the best thing you do is pray for them. Just pray for them. Pray that God would help them. Pray that God would help you. You know, uh, John Wooden was one of the greatest coaches that uh, college basketball ever saw. He had some records that probably will never be repeated. 88 game winning streak. Um, and he's, his, he was a mild coach. He just sat there, never stood up, never got angry. Um, he was just a mild coach, unlike some of them. They're ranting and raving and yelling at the players and the refs and the fans and everybody. And so uh, there was another coach named Bobby Knight. Bobby Knight had a habit of getting angry at the referees and at, and at everybody and throwing chairs. And then one of the reporter tried to get John Wooden to make comment about Bobby Knight. And this is what he said. I'm going to quote it. This is what John Wooden said about Bobby Knight. He said, I think Bob Knight is an outstanding teacher of the game of basketball, but I don't approve of his methods, but I'm not a judge. And I'm not judging Bob Knight. There is so much bad in the best of us and so much good in the worst of us. It hardly behooves me to talk about the rest of us. Wise words. There is so much bad in the best of us and so much good in the worst of us. Let's don't even talk about the rest of us. Hey, thanks for joining me today. Thank you for being part of our online church service. We hope it's been a blessing to you. We'd love for you to connect with us personally if you're in the area. Um, we'd love to, to be able to meet with you. So um, please, in the comment section or in the description card, in the description where there's a connection card, let us know who you are, where you're at, how you're watching it, how it's been a blessing. We'd love to be able to connect with you. You can join us anytime. Um, share this on your, you know, your feed that other people might be able to watch. It might be an encouragement to them as they're struggling with people that are hurting them. So we want to treat them the way Jesus has treated us, and that is with kindness. Uh, so we want to do that. And thank you so much for continually to give to our church. Our church has been blessed by people helping us financially to maintain our ministry to our congregation in the community and even around the world. So whether you're doing it online, which is the most convenient, or you're mailing it in or, or dropping it off, thank you so much for continuing to support the ministry of Faith Baptist Church. I'd encourage you to help our missionaries. They're doing a great job. And uh, we'll be sending our support checks out uh, at the end of this month and uh, letting them know, you know, financially that we're behind what they're doing. We want you to hear the story about what one missionary is doing. And so just as an encouragement about what your finances are doing to help worldwide missions. So listen to this and then we'll be closing in a word of prayer. But have a great week. Hey, Faith Baptist, this is the Casey family. Just wanted to take a minute and touch base with you. I'm out on a prayer walk and just kind of thinking about you guys and 
Um, just wanted to say we appreciate you guys. We appreciate your love and support and your faithful encouragement over the many years as we've been serving and trusting God. Um, God's been doing some cool stuff in our lives here in Spain. It's been a crazy first six months. Um, honestly, it's been crazy for everybody, but it's a crazy time to move across the world. But I'm thankful that God got us here when he did because it would be even crazier to try to get to Spain um, and with everything going on. So I'm thankful God got us here. Our hearts are confirmed and, and confident of God having us here. And we're excited to see what God does as we continue to trust him. Some exciting things going on, um, even in spite of the difficulties. Just yesterday, or no, on Sunday, we had a church service in our house. So it was cool because we had uh, over 30 people and it was just neat. It was encouraging in the house that you guys helped with your support furnished. People were sitting on. In fact, one guy uh, came to church for the first time in his life and he's over 40 years old. So, I mean, he'd never, he'd never been to church. And so it was just encouraging and what a good time of fellowship. We had service and then we also had um, a barbecue after and lots of laughing and lots of encouragement, which is good during this time. I want to share three things I would love you guys to pray for. Um, if you would, pray for our language learning. Our language learning kind of got messed up with coronavirus, but we're back in classes and trying to keep moving forward. Um, it, language is important um, to successful ministry here. So pray for that, that it would go well and we'd continue to grow in our language ability. Pray also for our family, just relationships in the community. God's given us some amazing friendships with some people whose hearts are already soft to the gospel and so I'm rejoicing but just pray for more relationships pray that we would be wise and bold in our relationships uh, to engage people to bring them to Christ one day and then third pray for our church because our church is a small building we're actually looking at possibly getting a new building but that requires funds it requires start or it requires like work to be done and stuff like that in the midst of everything so the bank requires 20 percent down of the down payment so just some things to be praying about for our church so as we're looking for a building to grow into the funds and everything to make that happen pray for our family and the relationships in our community and pray for our language learning we love you guys and we appreciate you guys and you guys are really um a big part of what we're doing here so thank you for your support and for your prayers we love you guys see ya let us pray Dear Father in heaven, we just thank you for today. We just thank you for all you provide and all your blessings. Um, we're just thankful that uh, we're able to get together in person and online um, and to just worship you and praise you. And so we just, uh, we're thankful for the message today. We're just thankful for all of God's blessings. Um, and we pray for um, unity in our country. Uh, we just pray that, uh, you know, um, the Christian community would come out and um, be a shining light and um, make an impact for God uh, in our communities uh, uh, around the country and around the world, um, changing lives, bringing people to Jesus. Um, so we pray for that, pray for our missionaries. Um, we just thank God um, for all his blessings and all he provides and just pray that uh, God would just bring us back again um, so we could worship and glorify him and just pray that all we do would just be to the glory of God and um, just pray that God would continue to bless us and keep us safe and um, pray this all in Jesus name. Amen.